Yeah, thank you, Chairman. And we would also like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present our work today. Just need my presentation, please. Thank you. So Restec is a relatively new technology to evaluate laryngopharyngeal reflux, or LPR, in patients with extraesophageal GERD symptoms. An abnormal Restec pH metry is based on the Ryan score that was first published in 2009 and later updated in 2010 by the group of USC. And patients with extraesophageal GERD symptoms usually respond pretty well on PPI, but a growing number of patients in our clinic is unwilling to take PPI for the rest of their lives, and so we have a problem. The problem with the RESTEC pH metry is that the current level of evidence using the technique is rather low, and that um, the, um, the RESTEC pH metry has not been validated or correlated to esophageal pH metry. So this study uh, was published in 2013 in, from USC, and um, they studied 20 patients and showed that RESTEC may better predict a successful outcome for extraesophageal reflux symptoms anti after anti-reflux surgery. And they used the RESTEC and the proximal pH probe to show that an abnormal RESTEC was present in 86% of the patients with a successful outcome. More critical reports come from uh, Europe, and uh, this study that is, uh, has been done in uh, Italy showed um, that 36 patients who got a, um, a consecutive RESTEC and conventional pH monitoring were patients with suspected GERD and extraesophageal symptoms. And um, they showed in their study that a clear correlation between both um, pH monitoring systems was, was not been able to establish, and um, that's why they conclude that um, it is not clear which technique is the more reliable, to, more reliable technique to diagnose uh, lung, laryngopharyngeal reflux. And based on this study, another group from Munich then tried to show a separate proton pump that, was, that is based in the oropharynx to explain uh, laryngopharyngeal symptoms. But um, analyzing 20 patients with these symptoms, they were unable to show a systematically um, present H plus K plus ATPA is a proton pump in the oral pharynx, and so they also conclude that the role of RESTEC remains unclear. Based on this study, the same group from Munich then um, presented a pretty interesting study in 2016 at the UEGW, and they analyzed 10 patients after total gastrectomy, and surprisingly, they found that six out of 10 patients have a pathological laryngopharyngeal reflux testing. And to me also, this, the etiology of these pathological values remain unclear, but the problem is that in this study, they just analyzed 10 patients and no esophageal pH metry was performed to validate their results. We're in Cologne, we're one of three um, certified centers of excellence for surgery of the upper gastrointestinal tract in Germany. And we included 101 patients with atypical GERD symptoms over a period of three years into this study. We usually see two to 300 patients with GERD per year, and every 10th patient shows up with atypical GERD symptoms. Further inclusion criteria were no previous upper abdominal surgery, a complete gastrointestinal function testing, and a simultaneous RESTEC and conventional pH metry. Patients with a pathologic esophageal pH and an intact motor function were always advised to undergo surgery, and patients who had a different constellation were treated individually. For our further analysis, we created four subgroups that are demonstrated in this table. We think that these four different subgroups represent four different reflux scenarios, and I will come back to that a little later. The mean age of our patients was 53, mean BMI 26. All 101 patients had atypical reflux symptoms, and typical reflux symptoms such as regurgitation and heartburn were present in the majority of patients. So far, one quarter of our patients finally underwent anti-reflux surgery. 66 patients had a pathological esophageal pH metry, and 48 patients had a pathological RESTEC pH metry. So this is our result slide. It's a lot of numbers, but I want to try to guide you through this quickly. Patients in group A have a pathologic esophageal pH metry with a mean DEMISA score of 57 and a normal RESTEC pH metry, meaning that these patients have a distal esophageal reflux problem 
with no LPR, with no reflux occurring in the oropharynx. Patients in group C have a pathological esophageal pH metry with a gamester of 72 and a pathological restic pH metry, meaning that these patients have a volume reflux problem that is reaching the oropharynx. Patients in group D do not have any proven reflux, so they have a negative Demeester score of five and um, negative restic, restic scores. So we cannot explain uh, the atypical reflux symptoms in this group of patients with, um, with reflux. The most interesting group, in our opinion, is uh, group B. Patients in group B have a borderline elevated Demeester score of 10 and a pathological restic score. So if you compare this group to patients in group D who are completely negative, we're able to show that the Demisa score is significantly higher in that group. So that's what we think is a borderline elevated esophageal pH metry. So in conclusion, we believe that a variety of reflux scenarios exist in patients with atypical reflux or GERD symptoms. Our opinion is that RESTEC and esophageal pH metry do not necessarily need to correspond as previous uh, studies try to show. RESTEC is helpful in decision making for or against laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery in patients with a borderline pathological esophageal pH metry, but we still think that further validation of the technology is necessary. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any questions while somebody's coming up? Did you use PEP test in your or are you using PEP test in your institution? PEP test? I yeah, it's a, a new test that has been there in, in Europe for a couple of years, but has just been approved in the United States, where you actually test the pepsin in the saliva. No, we, did not, we did not use this in our institution. Yeah, we all know that LPR is a very uh, difficult uh, um, set of, I mean, uh, uh, the diagnosis that's difficult to make for people who are not familiar familiar with it, like was described for something else, if you are, if you treat LPR a lot, you can you know when a patient has LPR, but you are not able to really put your finger on it because none of the things that we have, whether it be a reflux RSI score, whether it, whether it be pH monitoring, uh, rest tech, none of them seem to be absolute gold standards, and we don't have a gold standard. So with that in mind, it's tough to correlate two things which seem to measure different uh, um, um, uh, refluxes. One is significant, very low pH reflux at the lower esophageal sphincter, and one is a little higher reflux, maybe with addition of bile or pepsin, which is causing this. So, you know, we all know that the correlation is different. Maybe with the PEP test, things will change. Yeah. I mean, you exactly named the diagnostic dilemma in these patients, and you try to do as much as possible diagnose the diagnostic tests to basically show what you want to show. But uh, of course, this is just an additional tool in our toolbox that we, mm -hmm. we would like to use. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nice study. Um, if you're operating on these patients in, I think it was group B with the slightly elevated Ryan score and slightly elevated, uh, but not uh, meeting the standard for Demeester score, what, uh, how are you counseling those patients and then uh, also what operations do you offer them and, and what are your expectations for that patient? So usually when we th see those patients in our clinic, we explain them that um, yeah, we're, we're not completely sure if the symptoms will really go away through the operation and that, that, that this is the reason why we do all those tests. Um, we usually perform, would primarily perform a Nissen fundoplication in, in any of those patients. We offer uh, also to pay for application or links. We do also offer um, endo stim, which um, will be presented later in this session. Um, but our primary operation would be a Nissen fund application. Thank you very much. Thank you.